Good evening. I'm Liz Kruger, state senator here in Manhattan. It is a beautiful May 13th in 2021. And we have an exciting show tonight to provide you information about how to get your businesses back up and running and revitalized because we are coming out of COVID. Not fast enough, still have to be smart and safe, but everything is telling us let's start moving as quickly as we can back to our new normal. I want to welcome the participants who are viewing on Zoom and Facebook or are calling into the town hall discussion this evening. Before I get to the proceedings, I want you to be aware that we have closed captioning options. As a viewer, you have to activate closed captioning to view the text on your device. If you're in Zoom, click on the live transcript in the meeting controls to start viewing closed captioning. If you're on Facebook Live, you'll, set a, you'll see a setting button in the bottom right-hand corner of your video. Click closed caption CC to start viewing closed captioning. And if you're joining us by telephone tonight, just remember this isn't an interactive webinar, so you have to stay on mute, please. Thank you. I always start every week with some announcements. Um, because there's things happening every week. Well, hard to believe, but we're just a little more than a month away from the New York City primary elections for our critical city offices. Mayor, controller, Manhattan DA, I think the city council seats, 35 of which are open. Um, so you will have an opportunity to vote everywhere, every district, if you are living in New York City. Now, you must be registered in either the Democratic or the Republican Party to vote in the primary election, but you still have until May 28th to re register in a particular party. So if you're already registered to vote, great, but if you never chose a party, now's your time to be able to participate, because the truth is, in New York City, most of the real action happens in the primaries. Primary day voting will take place on June 22nd. Of course, there also will be early voting between June 12th and 20th. And you can also request an absentee ballot. The deadline for getting these submitted is June 15th, but I urge you to make the request sooner than that. And I've just learned that the ballots are available to be sent if you make a request now. On the COVID vaccine front, if you are having any difficulty getting a second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, the following vaccine sites are providing second doses, even if you did not receive your first dose at the same site. City-run vaccine sites and Rite Aid pharmacies on a limited basis are handling the second shots, even if you didn't get the first shot there make sure you pick a site that is offering the same vaccine as the one you received for your first dose and make sure to take your, vac your vaccination card with you. Yesterday, the CDC voted to recommend the Pfizer vaccine be granted emergency use authorization for youth starting at age 12 and up. So we've had it for um, down to 16 and now it will go down as low as 12 years old that you can be vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. Again, it's a two-dose vaccine. Today, the CDC also updated its guidance for what fully vaccinated people can do, which includes relaxing mask wearing requirements under certain circumstances. For example, the guidance now says that fully vaccinated people can resume activities without wearing a mask or maintaining six feet apart unless doing so is required by federal, state, or local laws. Now that's where it gets confusing because some of us in our cities or our counties are making different decisions. Always do what's gonna make you feel safe and secure. If you feel that continuing to wear the mask and staying six feet apart is the right thing to do for you now, that's just fine. But if you have been doubly vaccinated or one dose Johnson & Johnson and two weeks have continued um, after that, and you want to start reviewing what you're allowed to do without the masks, be my guest. Particularly with outdoor activity, 
Um, the CDC has already made it clear if you're vaccinated and you're outdoors and you're not in a pile up of people, you should be just fine. And there's nothing like taking a walk on a beautiful today, like today, looking at the flowering plants and trees and being able to take deep breaths without a mask. My also has also received a briefing today from the New York City Health Department because the CDC guidelines specific to mask wearing was just released and the health department is assessing their guidance to determine what they define as appropriate or not in our densely populated city. Yes, we know we live on top of each other and we have to plan for that for, uh, effectively. The health commissioner advised that vaccinated New Yorkers who are indoors in a shared space with others should continue to wear the mask if they have safety concerns. And now we're going to shift off of COVID and vaccines. But of course, people who are watching tonight know my office puts up updates every day through internet. You can always reach us through phone, internet, um, old fashioned mail. Um, there are a lot of resources available that we will be discussing tonight. They may show up in your chat. Don't think you have to write everything down. Um, we will put those up online for you and we will make them available to whoever has registered for these events. So if we have your email, we can forward you all the information that's being referenced by our guests after the event tonight. You should know that this event is being recorded. And again, everyone who's RSVP'd for tonight will receive an email of the link to a video shortly. Overview. Small businesses are key stakeholders in our city's prosperity. With the city of New York reopening from COVID and small businesses poised to rebound, we wanna ensure they have all the resources they need to recover. Tonight, I am very pleased to be co-sponsoring this event with the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce. The presenters will provide information about available resources to support the vital small business sector on the local, state, and federal level. Um, we have some terrific presenters, more than usual. Uh, we usually only do one or two guests, but we really needed four for this one. So I'm very glad that everybody was available. Um, I, I will be introducing them just again briefly before they start, but just to go through it, um, my first guest is my colleague from the state Senate, Senate, Senator Anna Kaplan, who is the chair of the Commerce, Economic Development, and Small Business Committee at the New York State Senate with me. And she hails from Nassau County, just a hop, skip, and a jump away. And I'm very glad that she was able to join us tonight. And we're also joined by Jessica Walker, President and CEO of the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce, and Natalie Mendel, Director of Business Recovery at the Chamber of Commerce. And if you are involved in business in Manhattan, you really should know about the Chamber. It's, I think, unique among Chamber of Commerce's because such a disproportionate number of its members are small businesses, entrepreneurs, you know, people come to Manhattan to make their fortunes and to break out of wherever they were. And a lot of them end up finding each other at the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce. So I'm always extraordinary, extraordinarily impressed with both the diversity and number of activities that they take on for their members. I'm very glad that both of these women could be with us tonight. And then also finally, Peter Fened, Fennell, excuse me, Assistant Director for Economic Development at the New York City District Office of the Small Business Administration. After each of them presents, I will moderate a Q&A portion of the event. Some of you have already submitted questions in advance and others of you can add questions through the chat function on Zoom or Facebook. We'll try to get to as many of the questions as we can. Um, we never get to all of them, trust me, it's always impossible. Um, but with that, it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Jessica Walker, who will provide an overview of small business environment in New York City today. Good evening, Jessica. 
Hi, good evening. And thank you so much for the kind words uh, about the chamber. Um, we know how hard you have worked uh, and the key role you play in the state budget. And so we're very thankful uh, about the funding that was put in this year. We're gonna be talking more about that tonight, obviously. Um, tonight, I just wanted to start off by doing a brief um, overview of where we are with the state of small businesses. So let's see if this will work. I am not tech savvy at all. Okay. Um, so the first thing, can everybody see this? Yes. Okay, good. Um, the first thing is this is a little depressing uh, just to start things off about uh, where we are, but this actually is some of the best data we have right now to show how many small businesses uh, have closed because of COVID. Um, what you see here is um, not surprising. The deep, the, there's a steep decline in April. That's when we had the, the shutdown and there were so many businesses that uh, couldn't operate at all at that point. Um, obviously some businesses were able to work remotely. So, so we had that steep decline. And then, um, you know, uh, many started coming back, but where we are right now is uh, as of April 28th, we are down 39% of all small businesses in New York City. Now, I just wanna clarify this number means that um, the business is not doing financial transactions. So that, that means that some of the businesses may be temporarily closed and we sure hope that some of those are gonna come back. Uh, but, but I think we all know just from you know, walking around that we, we, we do have a lot of vacancies, um, uh, particularly in Manhattan. So we do know we lost some businesses. Um, on this, the next slide here. Um, so, so how did we get here? Um, obviously, some of the, the big reasons are around foot traffic. Um, so many of our small businesses, especially storefronts, just didn't have the customers coming in to support them. So foot traffic is still down. Uh, this is data from last week, still down 36% citywide. Um, in Midtown Manhattan, it's down like between 50 and 60% still, even though the weather is getting better. So that continues to be a, uh, an issue. Um, and then of course, e-commerce, everybody knows when we were all, uh, were asked to stay home and we did, uh, that meant that we were doing a lot of online shopping. And so, um, you see there that e-commerce has surpassed levels that weren't expected until 2025. It just accelerated all of that. Uh, and so both of those things have been really challenging for a lot of small businesses. This is a lot of information on this slide. Um, the headline, of course, is that the biggest job losses were concentrated in Manhattan. So um, these are big numbers, but the, the city between February and September of 2020, the city lost more than 600,000 jobs. Um, some of those are starting to come back, which is great, but we still have a long way to go. But you'll see that um, two thirds Two thirds of all the jobs that were lost were lost in Manhattan. Um, and uh, of course that affects the whole city because there are a lot of people who come into Manhattan to work, uh, but, but you can clearly see that, that this really is a Manhattan uh, centric uh, issue because of the concentration of businesses. Um, the other thing about this slide I wanna call your attention to is just the top industries that were affected with the job losses. Um, obviously food services and drinking places, that's our restaurants and bars. Um, we all know have been uh, impacted quite a bit. Arts and entertainment and recreation, we hear less about, but we do know a lot of um, galleries and dance studios um, have really struggled uh, because they had to close down and there really was no way to, to um, you know, you can't, a lot of that can't be done online. Uh, so that really took a hit. And then of course, retail, um, uh, just because everybody was buying online. So some good news though, um, there has been a lot of help for small businesses. Um, the, biggest, uh, the biggest is the program that came out of the federal government, which is the PPP loan program. I'm sure many people uh, out there tonight have taken advantage of this. And it's a, uh, a loan, a very low interest loan. And if you do certain things, um, usually around trying to keep your staff on, uh, it can actually be forgiven. So it becomes a grant. Um, you'll see here that this was data as of the end of February. We, this, uh, small businesses in New York City, 
were able to get $25 billion. That's a huge injection of cash into uh, the five boroughs. Um, I saw the data as of at the end of March and we were up to $27 billion. Uh, so so we're, we're looking at this could be, you know, by the end of this, by the end of the month, it could be at $30 billion, which is, which is really huge. And again, most of that money did go to Manhattan just because that's where most of uh, the city's businesses are located. Um, the other thing here, it's not on the slide, but just, just as an aside, I'm happy to say that most of the um, loans did go to businesses with 10 or fewer employees. So it really did get to our, our small businesses who really needed it. Um, some more, another bright spot here um, is that we're seeing a lot of uh, entrepreneurship starting to spring up. This, this chart shows national data uh, about um, business formations. So these are, these are people who basically went to the IRS and said, I want a, uh, a, you know, the, a, an employer identification number to start my business officially. Um, and you'll see that it really did spike in 2020 and the beginning of 2021. Um, in New York State, I think it's up about 20% already um, over you know, the previous year before COVID. So we think that this is because um, some out of necessity, there are some people who were laid off and, and they said, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chart, you know, go out on my own and, and forge my own path. Uh, and then of course, there are just some people we've been sitting at home. Some people said, you know what, uh, I have this great idea and I'm gonna go for it. So this is something that's actually really exciting and we wanna uh, try to maximize this as much as we can. Um, just quickly, the things that we've been uh, focused on over uh, the last year is three things. Obviously, we've been trying to do a lot of thought leadership and gather data about what's going on out there so that um, policymakers can craft great programs like, like um, uh, Senator Kruger and, and Senator Kaplan have around the $800 million that's going to flow soon. Um, we also have been doing a lot of door-to-door -door technical assistance. So we've actually been helping businesses apply for PPP and the other help that's out there. And my colleague, Natalie Mendel, when she's gonna speak, uh, will talk more about that and, and how that might be helpful for your business. And then we're also doing a lot of free webinars and trainings. This is on legal advice. Uh, early on in the uh, pandemic, we were trying to be very helpful. We brought a lot of lawyers on to help uh, businesses navigate lease negotiations and things like that. Um, so it's really just trying to, and then of course, there's been a lot of new rules and regulations over the last year. So this is really just trying to, to educate um, uh, small business owners. Um, and then finally, I just want to call your attention to uh, an event series that we launched. Uh, we actually had our second event earlier today. Um, the reason I'm sharing this though, is these are the four big ideas we think we need to pursue right now to really accelerate the city's recovery. Um, and uh, all of these really do hit at, at small businesses. Um, so obviously we do need to focus on our workforce. Um, there definitely is some training and retraining that needs to happen there because there are some sectors of the economy that are growing even in this, um, even in this, at this tough time. Um, today we were talking about building back record tourism and that's really critical because that's where a lot of uh, our customers come from for the restaurants and, and retail. Um, next week, we'll be talking about unleashing entrepreneurship. Like I said, uh, that's, that's something that's really exciting and we want to um, support that as much as possible and help those businesses succeed here. And then finally, uh, we're gonna be talking about attracting back remote workers. Uh, again, that just goes to the foot traffic. Um, every time somebody goes into the office, um, obviously we want it to happen safely and, and healthfully, but when they do go to the office, they're supporting, you know, uh, building workers who who keep that building going. Um, they're supporting all the restaurants and the retailers. Uh, you know, they shop from shop from uh, during their lunch hour. Uh, so it's all a big ecosystem, and that's why we're really focused on uh, on, on those ideas. Uh, so I will stop there, and I think we're going to hand it over to uh, Natalie uh, to talk a little bit about um, the the programs that we've been offering and the help available. Great, thank you so much. Hi, Natalie. Hi, um, I'm Natalie Mandel. I am the Director of Business Recovery for the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce. I thank you all for having me this evening. I am going to share my screen 
and uh, explain the New York City Small Business Resource Network. Okay, can you all see this? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so um, as Jessica mentioned, we are, uh, we have boots on the ground going door to door assisting businesses. And we are doing that uh, through the New York City Small Business Resource Network. Uh, for those that don't know, the New York City Small Business Resource Network, also called the SBRN for short, is a citywide initiative that all five borough chambers of commerce are working on together to help businesses recover from the pandemic. To do that, we are providing small businesses with free personalized guidance and resources. Uh, the way we are doing this is we're leveraging relationships uh, with corporate financial and professional service sectors with unique support from universities, philanthropies, and expert volunteer groups. This grant program is funded um, by the Peterson Foundation and the program is, uh, has oversight from EDC and the Partnership Fund for New York City. All five chambers of commerce are the boots on the ground, visiting businesses, running the program. Uh, the program's also in collaboration with SBS, which is New York City Department of Small Business Services, um, as well as the Partnership for New York City. So you might be wondering, uh, what kind of resources are available to small businesses? And I always say, whatever business problem you have, you should apply to our network because we should have something for you. Um, financial guidance is actually our number one requested need. And then it's marketing assistance and business strategy. So we have resources in all these departments, as well as tech support. We have an in-house tech specialist, which I'll go over soon. And then we also have legal counsel, which is a super popular request. If you need to be connected to a pro bono lawyer, let's say you have a question about your lease and you don't know how to proceed, we can connect you to a free lawyer. There are special offerings from the network. Um, you have to be a member of the network, which is completely free, but if you're in the SBRN, you um, have special offerings sometimes. For example, we just had a free website program where we got businesses a website to get online. We are actually hoping us right at the moment, you cannot apply for this grant. However, stay tuned for future opportunities. So who can apply to the program? The program is completely free and the only requirements are that you are a small business, which means you are 100 employees or less and that you are located in the city of New York. So one of the five boroughs. And that is it, you do not need to be a chamber member, you do not need to pay anything. It is completely free to sign up. And to sign up, there are four easy steps to get support. You can sign up by um, going to nycsmallbusinessresourcenetwork.org or our short, UL, short URL is smallbiz.nyc. Once you're at the website, you will submit a business profile. It's a very short form. And after you're in the system, you will be assigned a small business support specialist through your local chamber of commerce. And then you will work with that specialist uh, to um, assess your needs, and then you'll receive personalized guidance and access to resources for your business. So uh, our website is available in all of these languages. This is what the homepage looks like. And this is the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce Small Business Resource Network team. We have five business support specialists. As you can see, we divided the borough um, in this way amongst the team. And then we have one technical support specialist who actually works not just in Manhattan, but Bronx and Staten Island as well. I'll go through these pretty quickly, but Francesca Bruce uh, covers Upper Manhattan and East Harlem. 
This is her contact information. She is bilingual in Spanish and English. Uh, this is Christopher Frey, who covers the Upper East Side down to Kipps Bay, also bilingual in Spanish and English. Alejandro Martinez, who covers the Upper West Side to Hamilton Heights, also bilingual in Spanish and English. And Sean Martin, who covers Hell's Kitchen down to the West Village and the Lower East Side, also in Spanish. And Justin Flamniano, who knows Filipino and English, and he covers Lower Manhattan and parts of Hell's Kitchen. Our tech specialist um, can help you with websites, databases, user experience, and more. The Manhattan Chamber of Commerce is having tech office hours right now where any small business can schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with STAR and discuss your tech needs. You can scan this QR code to set up an office hour or visit this link below. We also, the SBRN, the program has a restaurant and hospitality industry uh, specialist, Nicole Biscardi. She's not how she's actually housed at the Brooklyn Chamber, but she serves restaurants across the borough. So if you need, if you're a restaurant and you have questions about health and safety guidance, uh, indoor outdoor updates, SLA guidance, uh, either a specialist from our team can work with her and you uh, to assess your restaurant questions or we'll connect you directly. So how we're getting the word out about the program, we have flyers and palm cards in over nine languages. We are advertising this program on social media and newsletters, and we spend 70% of our time in the field, going door to door to businesses. So if you see one of these flyers in your store, you haven't yet, you should soon. We hope to hit every business um, in Manhattan. Uh, the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce also has free face coverings for small businesses. We have surgical masks, KN95 masks, and K90 masks. You can pick up masks from our office or ask your specialist, your business support specialist through the SBRN to get masks, or you can email us at the help desk at manhattancc.org and we can schedule a time for you to pick up. I went through all of that really fast, but this is all of our contact information. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact us. We are available for any questions that you may have regarding your small business. Great. Thank you very much. And again, all this information will be available to you if you're registered or you want to um, follow through afterwards. Our next speaker is my colleague, Senator Anna Kaplan, who is gonna be talking about funding and laws for small businesses that we've been helping with at the state level. Good evening, Anna. Good evening, Senator Kruger. Thank you so much for inviting me to your Small Business Recovery Town Hall. I'm honored to be part of this panel. Um, I can see there's already so much help um, that, uh, You've already provided, but I'm really glad to take part in this um, event and uh, really give some information about what we're doing in the state of New York. And before I start, I want to also uh, give a big shout out to our uh, wonderful leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins, and Senator Kruger for always listening to me. Uh, Senator Kruger did mention I chair small business, commerce, and economic development in state of New York. I've held that position for the last two and a half years. And I do understand how important small businesses are to all of us. Uh, they are the backbones of our community. They are what makes our community very special. And we as your electeds are really responsible to hear you, to listen to you, and try to do whatever we can to help you succeed. Um, and yes, it has been a very, very difficult year for all of us, especially the small businesses. But thank God, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. That light is getting brighter and brighter every day as we get more and more New Yorkers vaccinated and hopefully getting the confidence of the public to go out and resume life and hopefully help every small business 
to pick themselves up and start and hopefully build and build better. We understand these small businesses are the backbone. They are often people who live in our communities. They are also often businesses that hire within the community and that money keeps going back into our communities. So I think the message has to be from all of us. Please, please, instead of just being lazy and sitting behind a computer or doing something online, do everybody a favor, get up, go out, and really help all the small businesses in our community. With that, I would love to start a presentation. And I'm gonna ask my staff member, Joe, to start us on my PowerPoint. Next page, Joe. So this year, I'm very proud to say that in our enacted state budget, we were able to put in 800 million grant program that is designed to complement federal grant programs. This grant program is for small businesses and for profit independent arts and cultural organizations impacted by pandemic. And we, our purpose was to make sure the grant is as flexible as possible and that the funds can be used for several types of expenses. Details and the launch date are being finalized and I'm hoping that that information will come out very, very shortly. New York small business and for-profit independent arts and cultural organizations are the ones that define with 100 or fewer employees. And as such, you have to be able to demonstrate COVID-related revenue losses. As we move on, we will have the requirements. But I really encourage everybody to take a look at these requirements and try to put all your paperwork together early on. So once we have the program up and running, you're already a step ahead and just can go right into it. There probably is gonna be proof of revenue loss or other economic hardship in 2019 and 2020 business income tax returns for partnerships include IRS form 1065 and schedule K-1. For sole proprietors, they should include IRS form 1040, schedule C, or a completed IRS form 4506T. You also have to provide following two of these uh, documents. Uh, basically, a lease, utility bill, current business bank statement, current business mortgage statement, business credit card statement, professional insurance bill, payments processing of statements, New York State um, form ST-809 or ST-100 sales tax collection documentation. Any one of those two would be very, very helpful. We would also probably require a schedule of ownership, listing of names, addresses, and social security numbers, phone numbers, email, percentage ownership, and photo ID for any owners with more than 20% ownership of business. Proof of number of employees is very important, mostly submitted by New York State Form 45 document for employers for firms. And for funds distribution, IRS is going to need form W-9 and bank account information. Now, who's eligible for these grants? These grants are used for COVID-19 related expenses. And that happened during March 1st, 2020, and going through April 20. April 1st, 2021. And it could include payroll costs, commercial rent or mortgage payments, payment of certain taxes, general operating expenses, including insurance costs, utility costs, costs of personal protection, 
equipment, PPE, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, um, HVAC costs, other machinery or equipment costs, or supplies and materials necessary to comply with COVID-19 health and safety protocols. As you can see, it is quite inclusive. Details on this program will be finalized very soon. For every one of you who is watching, please write down this email address and you will be alerted when the program is ready and finalized and applications are being accepted. This really identifies the pandemic small business recovery grant program. And I have to stress, these are grants. These are not loans. So whoever qualifies can have this fund available to them without really burden or thinking about repaying this. It is free money. And I hope that many, many um, businesses throughout the state take advantage of this. Thank you, Anna. Oh, do you have, you have more, right? I do. I have a few more. That's okay. Good, good, good. <laughs> then we, we also have another program called Restaurant Resiliency Program, where we put in 25 million grant program providing funding for restaurants that chose during this very difficult time provi to provide food and meals to people within distressed or underrepresented communities. You know, it really showed, we showed in New York how New Yorkers came to aid of each other and really helped during these very difficult times. There were a lot of restaurants who really contributed and we wanna make sure that they know and provide, provide us with some information. Details again will be available very shortly and we would like to have you take advantage of this $25 million grant program. Again, for grants, um, funds will allow restaurants to cover costs of food, preparation, and delivery of meals to a vulnerable population. Next, we have another pot of money that's available. It's a restaurant return to work tax credit program. There is $35 million in this program, again, which is an incentive to COVID impacted restaurants to bring restaurant staff back to work and to increase hiring in New York State restaurants. This was funded in our enacted state budget and qualifying businesses are eligible for a tax credit of $5,000 per New Yorker hired up to 50,000 per business. This program is open to all small independently owned restaurants in New York City or in areas that were designated by New York State Department of Health as either an orange or red zone for at least 30 consecutive days. And applicants must be able to demonstrate COVID related revenue losses. And applicants must show hiring of at least one full-time worker for the restaurant. Again, details on this will be available very shortly. We also have a fourth uh, bucket of 100 million, a two-year tax credit program designed to jumpstart the entertainment industry and support tourism in activity in New York City. As we heard, Jessica said, that is a very big economic engine in New York City. We want to make sure that we encourage musical and theatrical productions to begin performances sooner and to come back stronger. And this will offset some of the costs associated with putting on a production. Again, this was enacted in this year's state budget. Qualified production companies may be eligible to receive tax credit of 25% on certain production expenditures uh, to be determined and qualifying productions are eligible for tax credits of up to 3 million if their first performance is in the first year that applicants are accept, applications are accepted. 
and for productions whose first performance occurs after the first year in which applications are accepted, but before December 1st, 2022, may be eligible for one and a half million unless a determination is reached that the New York City tourism economy has not sufficiently rebounded. Again, this really um, is for venues with a stage and seating capacity of at least 500. Production must be for profit entities and we'll have more information on this, hopefully very, very shortly. There is also New York Forward Loan Fund. This um, has been, it's an economic recovery loan program providing small businesses and small residential landlords with working capital loans. It is for small businesses with 50 or fewer full-time equivalent employees, non-for-profits, small residential landlords that have been, that have seen a loss of rental income. But please be aware, these are loans. They are not forgivable in part or in whole and the loans have to be paid, repaid over a five-year term with interest. I have to point out that uh, the New York Forward Loan Fund, you have to um, have 50 or fewer full-timers, have had a gross revenue of less than 5 million per year and must not receive a US Small Business Administration Paycheck Prote Protection Program, the PPP, of greater than 500,000 or an economic injury disaster idle loans for COVID of greater than 150,000. And your hardship has to be a result of COVID-19 and you have to be in business for at least one year as of the date of the loan application, and you have to be located in the state of New York. Again, all of this information are available. Um, I also want to point out you have great resources in New York City, as it was already mentioned by Jessica and Natalie, but also in New York, we have New York Small Business Development Centers, SBDC, who are really one-stop assistance for small business owners. They are free and extremely helpful, very knowledgeable, that can help any small business with multiple locations in Manhattan and New York State. One other source, the last source that's available, it's the Entrepreneurship Assistance Centers. Again, it's something that we fund through New York State. This is, these are centers, 24 of them throughout the state that provide instructions, training, technical assistance, and support services for new and aspiring entrepreneurs. Again, their services are free and extremely helpful. I encourage every small business to really contact them. There are two centers in your location in New York City and 24 in the entire state that really have a lot of information that could be very helpful to any small business. With that, I'm done with this and I wanna thank you. Oh, there's also the business mentor in New York. <laughs> um, I really do think we in New York have a lot of different resources for our residents. And I would love for us to make sure that we tell everybody about these resources so that every small business can take advantage of them. Um, they're there to help you and we're glad that we have them. So we need to just make sure that we put the word out. Right. So I want to thank, thank you. you, Anna. I also want to just highlight for everyone who's watching tonight. It's not just that Anna was the chair of the right committee. When things were getting tough, it was the very end of the budget negotiations. There wasn't enough money for everything everyone wanted. And Anna basically made a plea for another billion dollars for small businesses. Basically, we couldn't walk away from our obligation to small businesses. And she wasn't supposed to win that fight. 
and she won that fight that night. And if not for her, none of these new programs would have the money in them that they had. So I think we all owe her, even if we didn't know that she was the one, that she was the one who pushed us all to make sure we got this part done. So thank you very much, Anna. And thank you thank for being you. with us tonight. Thank you. So much. Thank you. All right. So we don't want to leave off our last speaker, Peter Fennell, and I'm just going to pass it over to him. Hi, Peter. Hi, Senator. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Everybody able to see the screen now? Yep. Okay, great. So I will be providing you with um, an overview of the federal economic aid and support being provided through the SBA in support of America's uh, small businesses during the pandemic. Okay, and always for the latest updates and information, always visit the SBA's website at sba.gov. And while you're there, also connect with an SBA uh, resource partner for local assistance. So our resource partner network. So, you know, uh, we're in all 50 states and US territories providing this service. As mentioned before with the SBDCs, all these services, uh, sitting down, working, counseling, mentoring, they're there to assist you with uh, completing the applications. Uh, our, our resource partners uh, created by the SBA, funded by the SBA, the Small Business Development Center is a joint uh, thing between uh, federal and state everywhere. So you have the Women Business Centers, WBC, the Small Business Development Centers, SBDCs, the Veteran Business Outreach Center, VBOC, the Service Corps Retired Executives, SCORE. Okay, so they are always identifying federal, state, and local aid to help assist your businesses. So they are a wonderful go-to place for everybody. Uh, they're, they're, you know, for their communities, they, they are on the button of what's available. Their traditional focus, of course, is on business operations, support, counseling, mentoring, helping people uh, take their business, start a business, take a business to the next level. Um, with ongoing mentoring, whether it be monthly, quarterly, whatever it may be, uh, businesses are twice as profitable as non-mentored business and significantly more resilient, especially in this time, um, than non-mentored businesses. Okay, so look at our funding options uh, from the federal government. So we have loan programs, we have the, the Paycheck Protection Program with forgiveness becomes a grant uh, forgiven. We have the uh, SBA's debt relief on SBA loans. We have the economic injury disaster loan. And in our grants, we have the uh, EIDL advance. We have the targeted EIDL advance. We have the supplemental EDI advance. We have the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, SVOG, and we have the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, RRF. Okay, PPP, Debt Relief and Idle. So Paycheck Protection Program, still funding available, underserved communities. There is approximately 9.9 .9 billion remaining set aside for community financial institution uh, program participating financial lenders that serve underserved communities, such as community development financial institutions, minority depository institutions, certified development companies, and microloan intermediaries. So a great way to access those is through our SBA website, and that would be Lender Match. Okay, the PPP loan application, it's between the borrower and the lender. The lenders have delegated authority from the SBA. It's the lender who makes the approval or denial decision. Okay, some highlights of the PPP program. All PPP lending, 2020 and 2021, 10.85 million PPP loans for a net approval amount of 782.2 billion. Okay. Okay. And the average uh, 2021 PPP loan size is $47,000, identifying that we are providing support to the small businesses through the PPP program. Okay, debt relief. So the uh, program for 7A, 504, and microloans through the SBA, assistance varies based on uh, when the SBA back loan was approved and type of loan, your 7A, your 504, your microloan. Uh, the borrowers do not need to uh, apply for this debt relief. The SBA provides it automatically. You can always check with your lender. Okay. And with this, the SBA will pay principal interest and fees on existing SBA loans for three months. Uh, this is for SBA loans, the 7A, the 504, and microloans that are funded on or before um, 
September 30th of, of this year, 21. Economic Injury Disaster Loan and Advances. So uh, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan provides economic aid to businesses experiencing temporary loss of revenue during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, terms, 3.75% for businesses fixed, 2.75% for nonprofit fixed. The maturity is up to 30 years, no prepayment penalties, loans over 25,000 secured by UCC filings. Okay, um, EIDL loan program, the maximum amount was at $150,000 that a business has could receive. It has been increased to $500,000. And to request an increase in your funding at this time, you can email COVID EIDL increase request at sba.gov. Again, that's COVID EIDL increase at sba.gov. The advance um, uh, EIDL funds was exhausted, uh, which provided a grant up to uh, $10,000. The advance was a grant up to $10,000, identifying $1,000 per employee in the business. So based on that, um, so the targeted EIDL advance, no action required until the SBA will, con will contract you directly via email, okay? Well, it, it's to balance out a previous EIDL advance to the full amount. Uh, if you were partially funded due to due to the uh, funds uh, expire being exhausted, or um, it was already exhausted, so you received a partial, or you received you know um, you didn't get receive anything, this will make the difference up. And so the target EIDL is talking in low income communities um, suffered greater than thirty percent economic loss and has 300 or fewer employees. Those who applied for the EIDL advance but did not receive funds due to lack of funding will receive a full 10,000 if they meet um, requirements for the target EIDL. Okay, and the SBA will reach out to those who may qualify. So the SB, through your initial application, the SBA has you and knows who qualifies for this and is sending out uh, emails inviting those who qualify to apply. The supplemental EDI, EIDL, again, no action required. It's an additional $5,000 of support, okay? By completing the, the targeted EIDL advance application, businesses located in the low-income community can pr prove more than 50% economic loss during an eight-week period beginning on 3-2-20, has 10 or fewer employees, Okay, and for uh, assistance with uh, your EIDL, their customer service, uh, this is at the Office of Disaster Assistance, ODA. Um, their email is disastercustomerservice at sba.gov and their phone number is 800-659-2955. Okay, the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, okay. The program includes over 16 billion in grants to shuttered venues to be administered by the SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance. Eligible applicants may qualify for grants equal to 45% of their gross earned revenues with the maximum amount available for a single grant award of $10 million. Two billion is reserved for eligible applicants with up to 50 full-time employees. Okay, I'll skip this. And so, this we're into this is week three but through the first two weeks of the sh shuttered venue operators grant we've received over 11,500 applications so looking at this we have 4,000 over 4,700 live venue operators or promoters applied over 2,600 live performing arts organization operator over 1,400 motion picture theater operator over 1,300 talent representatives over 743 theatrical uh, producers applied, or 590 museum operators. Um, that's 11,500 applications were received in the first two weeks. Okay, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, RRF. Okay, the American Rescue Plan Act appropriated 28.6 billion for the RRF, authorizing SBA to award funds. The appropriations remain available until expended. Fund must be used for eligible uses no later than March 11, 2023. Fund prioritized direct relief to women, veterans, and socially and economically disadvantaged individuals and includes $9.5 billion in set-asides for smaller businesses. 
who is eligible? Eligible entities are businesses that are not permanently closed and include businesses where the public or patrons assembled for the primary purpose of being served food or drink. So essentially here is being served uh, an establishment where you're being served food or drink. And whereas the on-site sales to the public comprise at least 33% of gross receipts for food and drinks. So we're looking at restaurants, food stands, food trucks, food carts, caterers, bars, saloons, lounges, taverns, snack and on alcohol, beverage bars, coffee shops, ice cream shops, bakeries, brew pubs, microbreweries, and the list goes on. But it uh, basically looks like a 33% rule that whereas 33% of on-site sales to the public of uh, food and beverage. Okay, uh, how much am I eligible for? Okay, SBA may provide up to 5 million per location, not to exceed 10 million total for, for the applicant and any affiliated business. Minimum award is $1,000. Okay, how do you apply? Directly through the SBA platform at restaurants.sba.gov. Again, it's at restaurants.sba.gov. Uh, through a point of sale um, vendor, uh, please reach out to your vendor, see, uh, see if your uh, POS provider is participating, or you may um, apply on phone at 844-279-8898. Okay, how do you get help? So the call center hotline is the same number as before as the application number. Um, you can contact the local um, SBA district office, SBA resource partners. Uh, they're all there ready to help, and there should be uh, help available in multiple languages. Okay. Uh, best practice with this is um, provide complete documentations, make a complete application, okay? Leverage your resources. It's not required, but if you can access the help of a CPA or other accounting professional, it may help ensure the complete and well-documented application. Application corrections. The SBA cannot make any corrections. The application will have to be withdrawn. You make your corrections, it goes back in, you're at the back of the line. So it's best to get it done correct the first time. Okay. And those who are still uh, intending on applying for a PPP loan, um, applicants are advised to complete their PPP uh, application in advance of the RRF application. Okay. When can I apply? The, um, so we are in the second week of the program. The, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund opened for applications on May 3rd at 12, 12 noon. And we're in a priority period. So the first, during the initial 21 days, priority period, the SBA will accept applications from all eligible applicants. So SBA is accepting all applications, but only applications from small business owners by, owned by women, veterans, and socially and economically disadvantaged applicants will be funded during this period, okay? Day 22, all eligible applicants will be processed and funded until program funds are exhausted. Okay, so in the first week of the program, week one, approximately 16,000 RF applications have been approved for over 2 billion in funding. Okay, so that's pretty good. And I am done with this. Any questions? Well, you were a rapid speaker, <laughs> but it was very articulate and you gave us huge amounts of information. And uh, sure. pardon? Oh, I just gonna say, Senator, I have provided um, all the phone numbers, the links, the contacts uh, to, to your office there. Great, sure. yes, we've put them up in the chat, but more relevantly, they will be online in a variety of places and sent out to people who have registered. Um, so don't think you have to sit there with a pencil trying to write everything down with all the phone numbers because um, each of our guests tonight who were phenomenal gave us a great deal of technical information um, to follow up with. And so don't worry, you don't have to memorize it before we go offline tonight or have written everything down. Um, we do have many questions. And I have to say some of them are very individual. So I'm not sure you know, that you would get the answer you want now. It would be clearly better for you to just follow up with one of the people that you heard about tonight, probably through the Small Business Administration and or the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce's, um, all those people who are helping to, geographically by language, by topic. Um, 
So some people have some of those questions. I think I'll skip. And let's see, the first ones I think I'll try to answer because you won't like the answers, but I think they're just true. How can I get a commercial lease reduction? Most likely your commercial lease is with a private individual or company and the government can't reduce your rent. You can go to your landlord and say, things have been really bad, you know that, and there's an awful lot of empty space suddenly, so I'm hoping we might come to a reduced commercial lease amount. And apparently some landlords are saying, yes, I'd rather have you with less money than no money, and some are not, but there isn't a government program that can force a landlord to reduce your rent, sorry. Um, but then the next question is, what about real estate tax relief for small business owners? So that also, we're here in Manhattan, although you might be listening in from anywhere. So property taxes are the policy of your local government. So here it's New York City government that sets the real estate taxes. And I'm sincerely not sure if they have any kind of tax relief program planned. Um, I don't know if any of my guests know if, if I'm wrong, um, but I don't think I've heard of such a program. Nope, no one's jumping in. So I think- If I, think I may- that, Please. There is no real estate tax relief, but I do have a bill, bill number 29, which actually addresses to reduce the amount of small business must pay in taxes by increasing the corporate tax threshold from 290,000 to 390,000 and lowering the rate to 4%. So that could be helpful if we are able to pass that in New York state, we can actually reduce the corporate tax for some of these small businesses. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Um, and then there's another question, which is the feasibility of um, New York City or New York State um, urging landlords with empty storefronts to make them available. And there's been a variety of proposals to try to do that. And some of them are incentives and some of them are penalties that you would actually pay a penalty for leaving your commercial space empty for beyond some reasonable amount of time in between tenants. So those are city government proposals. So, you know, everybody's running for mayor right now. We can ask the 42 of them and everybody's running for all the other slots also. So maybe that's uh, something that can get some momentum at the city government level. Okay. For people about to start a small business and the Manhattan Chamber was talking about the growth in new businesses. So if you're about to start a small business, what help and guidance is available now to, to get the information to know what you're doing? I'm assuming that is one of your programs at the Manhattan Chamber, is that correct? Natalie, do you wanna talk a little bit about what people can do? Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely encourage you to contact us. There's many resources we can connect you to through our network, but um, the first ones that come to my mind are Actually, um, the, uh, the state, the Empire State Development has um, some counseling for businesses trying to start up. And same with the city, the Department of Small Business Services also has a ton of free resources and courses on how to start a business. If you just Google nyc.gov starting a business, you'll be able to find a lot of stuff there. Great. I would like to add into that. We have the SBA's resource network, the uh, Women's Business Center, WBC, the Small Business Development Centers, SBDC, they're on college campuses, uh, the uh, VBOC, the um, uh, SCORE. You know, I, I like to look at them and there's never a charge when you meet with them, work with them, and it's amazing. And I always look at it, let's say if you're uh, starting with a business, you might be doing something in manufacturing, you can find a SCORE mentor who spent his whole life doing that. They're in that. Uh, you're starting a business and you need to get involved in social media. You can find somebody who was, you know, a score uh, mentor who was there and did that their whole career. And now they retired and they're there and they have that incredible knowledge. 
uh, it's it's an amazing network, and they and they have that help. Um, the small business development centers are state and federal joint there, and they are you know, just wonderful. The SBDCs are uh, tasked with also helping with manufacturing assistance, helping with international trade, disaster support, uh, government contracting, uh, small businesses. The federal government is targets uh, between uh, subcontracting and prime contracting. It works out to uh, excess of $200 billion a year. Uh, so there's tremendous support there for the small business to start, grow, and develop. Thank you. Thank you. So this is also, if we can mention the EACs, the Entrepreneurship Assistance Centers in New York. There are two located in New York City that do the same thing, really walk everyone through a business plan, talk to you and really flush out what you need to do in order for you to succeed. Thank you. Hey, I never even heard of this question, so I'm gonna throw it out there. How do you get a business license for working at home? You need a, a license to work from home as a sole proprietor? I'm not familiar with that. No, I mean, it depends on what the industry is. Obviously, if you're cooking out of your home, for example, um, that's going to have, uh, you know, some different standards. But if you're, you know, producing goods, um, you might not need it. So it really does depend on, on that. Uh, Natalie, do you want to add? I'm no, sure. I that totally agree. Um, it just... I, I was going to say it depends on the industry and what you're doing, um, but it sounds like if you're working from home, you might be a sole proprietor, but I obviously can't tell you what you, what the business is. Um, and then also if you need, if you have questions about it, you can contact us. Um, all of my contact information is there with the Small Business Resource Network. We can help you find uh, the right connection. And I'm just going to throw in there from a from a housing perspective, if you are living in a rental apartment in a multifamily dwelling, which most of us live in in New York City, double check your lease because you don't want to be opening a business of certain kinds where people come and go without getting permission from your landlord because you might be violating your lease. And everybody's going through tough times right now and we don't want you creating a housing problem for yourself in the process of trying to get a business going off the ground. So when you mentioned a food business, I'm gonna say, yes, I think that's one of those categories where in most residential buildings, in the actual apartments, they do not let there be food businesses in, in your residential leases. So you wanna, check the housing side of it as well as the business side of it. Okay, um, huh. is there a directory of somewhere online that lists all the organizations and resources that might be available right now? It's sort of overwhelming. I agree, it's a great idea. They said like a topic specific 311, it's bewildering and overwhelming. And I'd say yes, but it sounds like everyone we had on tonight had their own sort of master lists of incredibly good resources. So get all of them offline from, from me after this event and I guess staple it all together and pretend it's a resource book because I'm not sure there's a full resource book, but Anna's raising her hand. Yes, Anna. So I would love to tell everyone about <clears throat> my legislation that was signed into law which requires the Empire State Development Corporation to coordinate with state agencies and state authorities to collect information on programs that are being offered by each agency uh, to assist small businesses. This information once collected will be organized and shared on the ESDC website and it should be available July 1st of this year. Thank you. And um, yes, I like. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. If I if I could add to that on the SBA website, uh, you look for local uh, assistance and resources, and you click on the district office, uh, and you find whichever district office is closer to you. Our New York district office. Bottom left hand side is a PDF of our resource guide, and it lists all our programs. Got it. Okay. So. 
I think partly the question was answered by several of you tonight about, you know, businesses who are in trouble. Um, but this, this one's slightly different. Is there anything available if your business was struggling for many years before COVID and then you did get some PPP loans during COVID, um, but obviously that was only so much for so long and only applies during the COVID year. Um, you know, if you've already, if you're just a business that's in trouble and lots of them are all the time, are any of these programs that we've been talking about tonight the right programs for you? Um, I'd like to uh, help with that a little bit. Um, we have, you know, let's say um, with the counseling through our resource partners to build that solid foundation, to make, to, to create that mentor uh, environment where you are building a solid foundation. Um, 2017, 2018, and just shy of it in 2019, in our district here, we did over a billion dollars in SBA uh, guaranteed lending you know, before the pandemic. This is businesses that went to their bank. The bank said, you don't meet our uh, standards. And then with an SBA guarantee, 50 to 90% received the funding. And so in just this district area, we're talking in excess of a billion dollars in 17, 18, and just shy of it by 100, you know, um, uh, in, in 19. So there's funding out there and support there. We have technical assistance with that, where there's training going on all the time for that um, to help you plan your business and make that, you know, your growth plan, your business plan, and, and get out there and build that solid foundation to move forward. Thank you. Also, um, I think. Yes? I believe also they could certainly look into New York Forward Loan Fund. Um, this would be helpful to businesses that have been in existence that are having a capital issue. Uh, obviously these are loans and they have to be repaid, but the interest rate is 3% and they have to repay it over five years. This could be something that would be helpful to small businesses. So obviously there are endless niche issues for different people in different professions. Uh, this person asks, are there any special resources available to freelance photographers? Yes, Natalie is shaking her head yes. Oh yeah, I, I never wanna interrupt. Um, there are absolutely tons of resources to freelance photographers. It depends what they're looking for, but if you're looking for marketing, or you're trying to change your online strategy to get more business, the Small Business Resource Network can definitely get you connected to resources um, for freelance photographers. Great, thank you. And then another question, what I think they're talking about that they really make social issue document documentaries, which don't make very much profit anyway, um, but benefit the common good. I'm going to suggest that you actually look into foundations that support documentarians um, and you know, sort of more the not-for-profit model. Um, but there is an amazing resource in Manhattan, which is the Foundation Library, where you can go in and actually speak to a librarian who will help you do research on foundations in the field that you're trying to raise money in. So I'm just going to mention that to the documentary makers who wrote in. Um, any special programs for minority owned businesses during COVID? So Senator Kruger, the Small Business Recovery Grant Program that we mentioned includes minority and woman business owned preference to ensure that they get an increased access to the program because we know these have been the businesses that have been really disproportionate proportionately have been impacted by COVID. So the 800 million grant that we have available should be help, very helpful to MWBs, minority and woman owned businesses. Got it. Also, just to add, depending yes. on where you're located or if uh, in the city or if, um, and for MWBE businesses, like for ex we have all their resources too. Um, for example, there's a 
Harlem Entrepreneurial Fund, uh, who, if you're located above 42nd Street, will provide relief to MWBE businesses. Great. And then a follow-up question that I think is for Anna Kaplan. When you were going through all those different state programs, some of them listed that you can't be eligible if you already got some other federal benefits. But I think most of the ones you listed did not. Am I right? That in most of the programs you described, it doesn't matter whether or not you were found eligible, say, for PPP before? Yes, uh, but we are waiting still for all the definite uh, guidelines. And as I said, we're working very hard with EST to come up with those guidelines. Please uh, reach out to us, reach out to your own senator. As soon as we have more information, we will share that with you. But really, this was an effort to try to help all of the small businesses and give them a little relief so that they don't have to worry about giving back the money and they are grants. And we want every business to really take advantage of them. Right. And I guess it's a Fred question. Um, so there is still PP, I'm sorry, a Peter question. Oh, I, I renamed <laughs> you for some reason. Um, so there's still PPP grants that you can apply for. And is there, but they are no longer convertible to be forgiven or are they oh. still convertible for being forgiven? Yes, they're, they're, nothing's changed. PPP loans, uh, they're there. Uh, the basic uh, funds have been exhausted. And like the uh, previous question, the, there's a set aside there that, rem that, that still has 9.9 .9, uh, billion in it that's targeting low-income community. Okay, and small businesses. And so that's what's available there. So that's, uh, you would apply through uh, for that through a CDFI, Certified uh, Development Financial Institution, uh, Minority uh, Development um, Institution. Um, you know, these uh, financial, these uh, low income community financial institutions are providing the support for the, uh, the PPP. And are there any of these programs targeting not-for-profit small organizations? Um, I got a question here from a child care operator. The others describe themselves as a small independent not-for-profit business. I don't think you can be a not-for-profit and a business, but I'm assuming you're a not-for-profit organization. So any of these monies that can be available to these people, they had employees, they may have had to shut down a lot of the exact same storylines as with right. so so with employees we have the ppp we have the idle loan um the idle loan the uh amount the max amount was 150,000 now it's 500,000 uh so those are two, the i the idle is a loan uh up to 30 years maturity for profit business 3.75% uh nonprofits 2.75% um you have that then we have right now we the Restaurant Revitalization Fund and the uh, SVOG, uh, Shuttered Venues. Um, but th that's what we have at this time for, on the federal level. And how long does it take to hear back for like the IDLE or the, or the PPP? Do you know at this time? I do not know that. I know they're trying to get the uh, Restaurant Revitalization Fund uh, through in 14 days within 14 days or less. And part of that is seven days uh, getting the uh, tax tr transcripts back from the IRS because they, so for all those applications that go on the federal level, the IRS has to, you know, provide the tra transcripts to match up. And just like uh, Senator was say saying with her programs, there you need the 45060, they're going to match up with the uh, tax returns. Okay. All right, just looking for maybe one last before we say thank you to everyone. You know, actually tonight I really did get through the questions. So tonight I'm going to say we got through our questions. I wanna thank you all for your presentations and for spending your time with us, very much appreciated. And for all of you who were watching, just know this is taped and it's available if people want to watch it at another time, or if you thought maybe you heard something and you weren't sure, 
um, tell your friends and neighbors they're welcome to watch it if they find it helpful. I want to thank State Senator Anna Kaplan, Jessica Walker and Natalie Mandel, Peter Faye Nell, who I've messed your name up several times tonight, I apologize. I really appreciate everyone being with us. I want to remind people that our next event for, for my office will be the final morning session of my senior roundtable series for 2021. And the event will be titled Reimagining Later Life Care Models. And it's going to be Thursday, May 20th at 10 a.m. And we will have featured Alana Kiefer, Acting Director of the New York Academy of Medicine's Healthy Aging Program, and Dr. Carla Perissonato, the Associate Chief of Geriatric Medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. And as always, remember to get vaccinated, keep your social distance. And it turns out in a lot of places now, they'll give you great stuff to get vaccinated. They'll give you free um, Metro cards. They'll give you free Long Island Railroad tickets. They'll give you tickets to Mets and Yankees games. So I feel like some of us who just went ahead and got vaccinated should show up and say, I want my sports tickets. I was good four weeks ago. Um, but just please tell everyone, get vaccinated. It matters for all of us. And you get free stuff with it now. So thank you all so much for being with us tonight. And everybody get home safe if you're not home already doing your Zoom from there. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.